Today I'm going to demonstrate how to add a user in the CalPads interface. We're going to talk about the user management as an LEA admin would do so. So I'm going to add, make sure that I'm using the fictitious LEA Palo Alto in the staging environment so I can show you this. I'm going to talk about how to add a new user, what kinds of org types are offered, how to add both LEA and school site users with different roles, talk about those user roles a little bit. I'll also show you some search functions so that you can see who is a user in your LEA. And I'll show you a tool that we have available so that you can, as the LEA admin, application Appendix B requires the LEA admin to do to take an inventory of those users in your LEA to ensure that they have the right or appropriate access to CalPads in order to maintain the necessary functions that they have for their job. We'll also look at how you reset passwords and who can do those password resets. So there's a bunch of stuff for us to talk about. Let's get started. First, we navigate to the admin user management submenu. This page is laid out with three different tabs, the user list, users and roles, and the add new user. This is where we're going to start, add new user. For the purposes of our demonstration, I'm going to add our new employee, Lisa Simpson. It's required to have the first and last name as well as the phone number of the individual. and the email. It's really important that we have the email associated with this individual at, for two reasons. One, that's always going to be this individual's username. It associates them with their email. That's the second reason. When we add a new user, we see that the system tells us the new user has been saved. There's the user profile messaging is at the top. Also, we see that the username and password status are now edit only, they're grayed out, and the system has moved us from the add a new user tab to the user list. This gives us a results table below the username. It gives us also the ability to edit the user. You can click on this action button. Let's say we wanted to change the first, last name, or phone number. Those are editable fields, and you would do so using the edit user. We need to assign Lisa Simpson an organization type associated with Palo Alto. So for the purposes of demonstration, first I'm going to show you how to assign a school type. This would be an individual who has one or more school sites where they work with data. In this case, I've selected Addison Elementary School from the list of available schools in the Palo Alto Unified LEA. I'm going to ask Lisa to work as the anomaly contact, and I can select by double clicking, or I'm also going to have her work on adding enrollments. So this she will get the SENR edit, and you can highlight and use the single arrow to move it over. And because she is going to have an edit view, she also needs the matching view role. So anyone who is going to edit also needs to have the view role. And then anyone who's going to look at student data needs to have the student search. This role allows you to look up a student based on that 10-digit SSID. And because Lisa is working at more than one school, I'm going to click the button called Save and Add More. So when I click this button, we see that there's a refresh to the Edit Association's modal window. And I'm going to give her another school in the Palo Alto Unified. She's going to work at El Carmelo. And for this school site, I'm asking her to do a lot. I'm going to use the double arrows and give her all the roles. For this school, I would like her to kind of train to take over as the LEA admin, and so I'm giving her a lot of responsibility there. But these are the only two organization types I want her to have at this time, so I'm going to save and close the window. We see the messaging here, so we know that that has happened, as well as now in the results table, we see that Lisa has two org type accounts associated with Palo Alto Unified, Addison Elementary and El Carmelo. She also has a number of roles 
at each of these schools. And you can see that by clicking on the link under the roles column, expand and collapse roles. There's also a little tiny icon that has the number of the total roles associated with this account. You can also edit the number or types of roles from these buttons here, or you can delete. If we decide that one of these schools is no longer necessary for Lisa, maybe they hire someone else at Addison and so she's no longer doing that work, I'm gonna click delete here. We know that that org was deleted because we see the messaging. All right, and so her password status is new because she's yet to go to her email inbox and associate this email address with her account. So let's do that now. Because Lisa is not a real person, I have associated my email address with her, so I should have received the account. Here we go. We have a new account created for us in CalPad. So we click here to confirm the email address. And when I click my inbox, it opens an email confirmation page in a new browser window. It tells me to go back to the email address that's associated with my CalPads account and look in my inbox for an automated email to change my password. And here we go. Reset your password by clicking here. And I click on that reset password. It takes me to the reset password box. I'm gonna enter my alias here, my alias email, give it a new password. Hmm, if you don't know what the password protocols are, you can click on this um, question mark to bring up the password requirements. And you'll confirm that password again and reset. I'm gonna save this password. And now if I wanted to, I could go ahead and click here to log in as Lisa Simpson. But for the purposes of our training today, I'm gonna stick with my LEA admin account as M. Vincent. So let's now go to the next tab and show you some search functions and we'll look up Lisa here. So if we were to, we want to um, look at all the users that are available in the Palo Alto Unified that have the same domain. We can look to see who is associated with my LEA because all those users in your LEA are gonna have the same domain name. In this case, we use FICMAT. Click on search. And in the Palo Alto Unified LEA with the username ficmat.org, we see a number of individuals. You can see that there are a bunch of people here. And if the individual has not yet associated their email with their account in CalPads, you'll see this send confirmation. So we know that Marge has yet to associate or click that token that came to her email inbox yet. And so we can reconfirm by sending this, or Marge can go to that forgot password link in the login page and she can also associate her email that way. The Users and Roles tab gives us more information about the users within our LEA. It's broken up into several sections. The top shows which LEA or organizational type we're looking at. The middle section shows us the total schools and the total users available for this LEA. And the bottom half gives us the roles the status and the org type available. So in this case, I want to search all schools in my LEA for that individual that we just added. And I gave her this email address. Let's see what roles that Lisa has. So I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna click inside the roles box and use control A to select all of these. So what I'm saying is in the Palo Alto Unified, at all schools, 
what roles, status, and level accounts does mvincent3 at ficmat.org have? We know that that's an, uh, associated with Lisa Simpson. So click the search button and scroll down to the results table. And here you can see that user we've just added. You can see the roles we've assigned. You can see the email that's associated with that individual. And the account status says active because we went in and we reset the password for this individual. We told the system that this email is associated with a secure account and that it has a school site at Palo Alto, at El Carmelo. Okay, now let's say we want to edit Lisa. So we'll look up Lisa Simpson. And here we see a couple Lisa Simpsons. We know that the Lisa Simpson we added is this individual with the M. Vincent 3 email. I clicked on edit and it takes me to the results page. This button here will only assign organizational types. That's LEA and school site users. So let's say that Lisa promotes and takes over as the LEA admin for our LEA. So first I would delete her school site and instead go back and assign her organizational type of LEA. When I assign an LEA wide org type, I still associate it with my LEA, but there are no available schools because this type by default LEA would have purview over all schools and educational sites within your LEA. And again, I want to give her all roles because she's going to take over as the LEA admin. So I move all roles over and I save and close this modal. All right, so now we see that she has an LEA organizational type at Palo Alto. No schools are listed because it's inherent in the LEA org type that all schools are there. When we expand this roles column, you see that all the roles are associated with her account. Now let's say that a user forgets their password. Here we are, I've logged out, so we're back at the login screen. I have cookies set up for my browser and I have the password and username that automatically uh, are present when I log in. But if we were to forget our password, you click on this forgot your password link and another screen comes up, forgot your password, spell your email right. You gotta spell it right because if you don't spell it right, it won't, it, will, it won't tell you that there's anything wrong, but when you submit, it won't send the token to your email. We need it to send the token to our email so that we get the correct email or the correct safety and security to connect to the system. So here is my new email. This is a message that confirms a password reset has been initiated. This is a temporary password link. It's only good for 24 hours. And so it's important that if you're an LEA admin, that when you're assigning accounts that you anticipate that user to log into their email within 24 hours. Passwords always reset. And so we're going to want to make sure that those users know they need to go in and take action as soon as possible. And so here I am I'm going to change my password and click reset. I get a confirmation that my password has been reset and I can click here to log in again. Remember, click the checkbox to agree to the terms and conditions and log in. So here again is where that forgot password link is. Log in takes us back to the home page. So I mentioned that the LEA admin account holder is responsible for looking at the inventory of users in their LEA and determining what roles are appropriate given the work functions that that individual has. To that end, the CSIS support desk has 
worked in conjunction with an LEA to create this sample CalPads user account agreement. This is a Word document that is editable. We have it on our website, the CSIS website. If you don't know how to navigate to that CSIS website, please do submit a ticket and we can help you do that. The agreement allows you to edit this to brand to your LEA. You can change any of the wording, but the idea is that this is a form that you can fill out or you can hand to possible users in the LEA so that they can assess what roles they should have, what level of org type they need to do their job, and the kinds of functionalities that each role provides. This has a long list of the roles available to each user, an LEA or a school site user. Go all the way down here, you see the Appendix A. This is also the information that's in the Terms and Conditions box on the login page. There's also a list of the webinars that are offered through CSIS. And you can, again, find that either through submitting a service request here in the help menu, or you can navigate to the CSIS website. Just a few reminders or tips. The email address that you input when you add a user needs to be associated with the LEA's domain and educational email. Every user should have their own account. You should not be sharing accounts, and that is because of the security model. Each username, given that it is an email, needs to be able to associate or send that 24-hour token to an email account that one person uses. The way that you'll know you have an account, or your users will know they have an account, is that they will receive an email in their inbox telling them that they have a new account created for CalPEDS. And again, this token is only good for that first 24 hours. It's also specific and linked directly to that individual. So you can't replicate or forward this email. And this is the way that we use the user management submenu. If you have any additional questions or you need help or assistance, please do submit a service request. If you are looking for information, you can also check out the user manual. The functionalities page has lots of information about user management. If you navigate here, you can look at all of the information that we've covered in creating user accounts. There are step-by-step -step instructions that include screenshots and there's also a way for you to see the total number of user roles similar to how I showed you on the Word document here. You can also search, use the search box for information about users. The search box is really very handy and can get you a lot of information. So here is the user management and the features I showed you in today's demonstration.